Hello everyone, thank you for joining. In this video we're going to be exploring the layout of the OMA and Alta platform because it's so big. We're going to be looking at some of the features that are going to be added, how to implement them, and lastly, hopefully start on the oil rig uh, mechanism that'll deploy the wellhead. So let's begin. So first things first, the layout itself that I've worked on so far, while I do like the general gist of it and how I have the helicopter pad walking into this kind of intake area. This thing obviously will get rearranged like I mentioned last time, but what I found, I was having sort of a creativity problem, let's call it, because the layout of this thing is so big and I don't want it to just be kind of sitting empty that's my fear that i have random parts that are unused and just totally empty the oil rig on the land you could see that it was well utilized every little bit of it was used up but here we just have a lot of square footage so so here we have our trusty blue beam pdf editor which as an engineer i spend a lot of my time in this this is where i mark up drawings and make comments and plan things so that's what we're going to do we're going to plan the layout of the oil rig or oil platform because generally it's just too big there's a ton of square footage something has to it has to be planned ahead of time in order for it to look proper and filled out so we'll note this is where our helipad is and vice versa likewise the uh right here is where the uh spawn station is beneath that and yeah, there's these little bulges here, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going, doing a general gist of the layout. So with our helicopter pad being here, I want the building to be in this type of configuration. I'm going to give it a color. Now the building itself will have architectural features more than this. It's not going to just be a box but I want it to kind of be it's almost like a bigger version of the Alta rig layout because the Alta rig in comparison is like this big or something like that so the this will be substantially bigger with more areas within that I want to make kind of a main lobby area here that's gonna have a port cochet or porte cochet there's a, a proper French way of saying that but pretty much it's like hotels when they have that kind of overhanging canopy and this will be our main entrance and there's gonna be some kind of lobby area here the helipad will feed people into this main area there's gonna be laboratories and workstations and a swimming pool and workout areas but generally this upper area here i want it to be the oma labs with a submersible and uh, rov deployment area which will actually drop right into the water there has to be now this so this is just the general layout gist obviously there's many different floors to this there's probably going to be three or four floors open areas and whatnot but let's just roll with this for now i'm going to label this the helipad so what I want to do also, in addition to having this port cochet, I want to have like kind of a mini uh, golf cart drive track roads system around here. I was thinking of having a monorail, but the physics of Stormworks don't quite allow for monorails because you could make it go in a sweeping like forward and back direction but not in a back and forth it'll only work in a back and forth configuration sorry so like we could have a monorail going like this and leaving the base building and making its way back and forth which maybe i'll do honestly but until th that's also going to take so I i'll keep that in mind and we'll see but i do want to have kind of forklifts and, and uh, golf carts that can drive you around so after that we have our main base building i want to have ideally two 
platforms or two oil rigs with the towers that like we have for the Alta. And it'll look, I'd probably put them like this. And the silos, which we talked about, would go most likely here. I'll rearrange my little golf cart track in a second as well. So that's probably what it would be like. And then off this, this one here would be the distillation chamber. And then this would be our crude oil storage. This would be for the jet. And this would down here be for the diesel. Um, maybe this is way too big, like realistically, but may, so maybe I make it into two smaller ones, but we'll see how that works. And then with this, these, these guys will actually be much smaller because we'll remove the chambers, the distillation and storage chambers from them. Now, in addition to all this, we'll need to have a garage. So actually, let's keep a running tally. Garage workshop, we'll need to have the rod storage and, and a rod system to deploy them. Then within this, like I said, the monorail, the golf cart tracks so let's start uh knocking things off here a good spot for the garage would either be depending on if we have if these are too big maybe we could clump them all up here and have the garage system down here obviously bigger like this alternatively the garage could be here right off the helipad so that's something I'll have to find out and see. Truthfully, the uh, edges of the oil platform won't really have anything, but that's okay. So maybe this is a good spot for the workshop since it's close to a helipad. It could be uh, repair things. And what'd be really cool is the helipad itself and the garage could have a elevator, a cargo elevator here that can drop like if you bring with your helicopter say that a golf cart a spare golf cart or a spare piece of equipment you drive it onto this thing your elevator and into the garage so i'm going to put this and call it the elevator okay that's at least one of them oops that is huge Okay, the rod storage, that's something else. So for the rod storage, I'll have to devise a system that honestly is, that makes sense for the oil rigs. Um, but anyway, this is a, a good starting point. So let's roll with this and go back to Stormworks and see what we could do. So looking at a similar view to what we just had, you could see that that sort of works what we have so far at least the helicopter pad is in the right spot here now the building layout is something that will have to be fine-tuned throughout a, a sequence of time and then i'll have to go in and plan the lower portions like if we turn this on the idea is to have some kind of dock and jetty and system but that's that that all can be kind of worked out and planned in various stages but regardless the building itself with the footprint that I have intended for it I'll have to adjust this I'm not happy with how this is and I'm probably gonna have to scrap this door because this type of lobby area is not what I envisioned at least not yet but I might think of something else this building or this upper floor will still remain. This will have to be revamped. 
the hospital room or the infirmary, this may be like a small temporary infirmary. In the main building, we're going to have a massive hospital. I also need a place for an elevator shaft that can go down into this area. So let's see if I make a wide dock extending from here and kind of just making its way back there for you to pair up boats and things that might be good and then ideally there will be like a wider portion here that has a building itself that has an elevator shaft connecting to the top bit this I might still remove it's a massive space that may not really be needed for anything but yeah, the square footage is just a bit intimidating because as most of you know, I want my structures and buildings to make uh, to make sense, to be valid, and to not just be mindless uh, layouts. Like I need it to be thought out and meticulous. So for that reason, it bothers me to have just a wide open, empty space of nothingness. And the reason I'd love to dive into making the uh, the oil platform work, but I'd rather create a layout that can be that can accommodate that system rather than just making that beneath this and then having to move it all around. I want to have a, a series of catwalks down here that are um, very clearly defined and useful. Anyway, this building itself, I have to figure out how exactly I want to make it flow properly. Like, see here, now we have our little lobby area, but I'm not a fan. So offline, I'm going to edit this layout. I know most of you aren't here just to watch me move bricks around, but regardless, that's something that I for sure need to do. I want the building to look nice and modern and kind of match the Oma thing that I have, the diving center. So this, each oil rig can have its own little station. That's okay. Even if it, if I remove this second half of it and just have this first bit, because this one in theory will have one main control center that controls all of your various pumping. Right. Now in here with our distillation chamber, that's very narrow and our heaters and all this stuff, that'll have to get revamped into different sized containers. I mean the storage one doesn't really matter, but the actual distillation chamber, I've thought of a good system here. All right, so I'm gonna pause the game and see what, pause the video and see what I can do and we'll get back to you. Actually, first things first, with our little helicopter pad and uh, crane, or lift, sorry, that I want to have the, I think the maintenance shop makes the most sense to be here in this region, because end of the day, the maintenance shop will house the equipment and it'll house vehicles and it's good to be close to the helipad because most of your um, shipments will be either from boat or ship or helipad. Now some things that all major uh, platforms have is a huge crane. And I'm talking like a crane the size of that tower. So for that reason, I may want to move this over a little and either have that crane here so it can deploy things for both the helicopter like if I put the crane base there in theory if I want it to be structurally accurate the crane base would be the best right over top of this column like right there because that's where it's the strongest 
So I'm actually going to take a look at putting that thing there. The only issue with that location is now that it's kind of blocking our lift or elevator. And then the storage warehouse can be here. Ideally, the rods can also be stored nearby and then they're brought in somehow, either on an automated system or not. And actually, let's first remove these things. So anyways, like I said, I'm going to get back to you. I've decided to take away this uh, storage module and I'm going to put it back here. And rather than making new storage silos, I'm just going to keep this structure, this shape, so it matches what I've already done. And we'll put it somewhere back here so I can have an access platform behind, potentially for that golf cart that I said I'm going to create. And we're just going to put a, sequ a sequence of these storage silos with just enough space for people to walk between. So something like this, I'm going to change the name and obviously remove those lights and stuff and probably the Alta decals. I don't want to have the whole thing too laggy. That's not my intention. I, I like when my creations are useful, but also functional and or functional, but also look good, but not just entirely, you know, um, call it uh, visual. I like when it's useful. Now this, we have a ton of storage space here, so what I might even do is this won't be a, like right now these are six various storage bins. I might make it so this is one, this is one, and this is one, and even that I might join up somehow and change around a little bit. But this is pretty good. Now this will obviously need some rework and my various pipe pumps and stuff. Now this part, I might even leave with each oil rig because this is, so each oil rig could have its own distillation chamber and have its own gas or diesel and uh, jet fuel storage as well as crude. And then from this, you pump it into this if you so desire. And like that, we'll have to fix. Uh, but that said, and this down here should have been moved with those, but that is fine. Now, to continue with my layout planning, let's see what we need to do. Okay. I will be right back. Now, before I go ahead and copy and paste this times two and develop the system for the rods, I think it is prudent or prudent or important to get this substructure portion going because end of the day that substructure or the thing beneath it will dictate exactly where we could put this and how to sort of drop the wellhead and all that stuff so it is important so i just painted that so it's easier to see and let's devise a system so obviously we have this hole and we'll need to have our wellhead And one of the cool things that I saw people doing, and that I was thinking myself, even as a suggestion earlier to uh, this sort of problem, or, I mean, by problem, I don't mean like it's a problem, I just mean that it's something that we need to solve. So, you would align it perfectly with this, center of that uh, shaft and now this doesn't want to clamp down but what if I place it here and then rotate it around and stuff and then we center it perfectly on that blue part meaning it's right below so just like that and let's well, actually, no, we don't want to lock it in place because it has to be moving down. So the moving down portion is uh, what sort of makes it different than the land-based one. 
But what I was thinking, and what I want to try, is to have a rod drop itself into this. And then upon that point, this thing will actually start to go down with that rod already attached. Because you could see here, we could anchor it to the um, extender track piles to anchor the wellhead to terrain. And then it tells us if it's anchored, well depth and drill depth. But I guess that the clamp is automatic, so it'll automatically clink that rod into here. Now for that, we need like a massive catwalk system beneath this whole platform. We need these, uh, let's use the cable anchors because cables are actually going to get us more um, work. We could transfer data through the cables. Now let's see if this is centered. Oh, because our whole oil rig isn't centered. I see. So that's fine. We'll just do it manually. And there's going to be four of them on either side, one on either side, which are going to be attached to a winch system, preferably. So this goes 150 meters. Um, how deep? What I what I read is that like this would be the best one to do the huge winch because now we've with 150 we've limited ourselves. So I guess let's. Uh, but the downside is also 150 I think is as much as we'd want to drop it down because any more than that and the rods may start to glitch out and not work properly so to be honest this may be the most optimal type of system because then it forces you well not forces you but it'll ma it make sure that you can't exceed that 150 or whatever so those are aligned let's see if that's aligned perfect and last is that one there nice so they've all aligned themselves and we can attach them to these guys now i'll test if these should be like out on a arm like maybe it's better to have the wind the cable anchor here somewhere but for now let's just try to have it close up what i will do however is get a little stabilizing structure down here that will hopefully stabilize the uh wellhead and prevent it from tipping over or losing balance. The, the floor should be fairly, or at least fairly uh, flat so that this will not be affected. But of course, if we need to, we could always put it up one, one level a little higher. Right, well, let's rotate that and attach it to the other side. and vice versa for the other two sides. I'll experiment whether one has to add like uh, the Magol to this or not, but for my, my thinking is that this is just to prevent it from sort of going off uh, balance and tipping over to its side. So hopefully that assists it and let's see if we could attach something between these ones to there fantastic now in addition to this thing i anticipate we'll put a decent amount of sensors on this and lasers that it tells us how far it is or how close it is to the seafloor and uh, camera systems and stuff but for now let's just roll with this and it's attached to our winches that's good which are attached to this so back in our control center in here 
we may have to add a table that will be because th actually this is for the rod placement so our next station is for the joiner and then this is for the actual uh, rotary table so in addition to all that I guess we will need a table so I may just expand that little building give us one extra step and one extra station this will be just the building itself moving over I'm not gonna look into the logistics of all this right now but just to get this going so I mean what I could do is even add it to the same table like this or it could be on its own table probably on its own table because this stuff here is valuable on its own like this is the actual uh, oil pumping and stuff so this is a station before the pumping and after the joining so in that case it'll be right here and I'm just gonna make this table so we have somewhere to start and I'm gonna close this hole so someone doesn't fall down and you know plummet but the rest of the building I'm not gonna worry about fixing too much of we'll do that later as part of the aesthetics portion but I like it you know this chair will move more and whatever So you've, you've joined your rod and you've put it down into that first, um, into the wellhead. So here, we'll need to add a few things. One of them will be a display. With the camera feed. Then we're going to have other displays telling us what, what the depth of that is. Like seafloor depth and whatever the laser sensors we'll need a system to move the clamps up to move the winches up and down now what do this one is just um, the joining track up and down so I'm gonna steal this one put it here and again like I said I'll rearrange things to make it flow nicer later but let's just say this is our winch up and winch down actually before I do that there's something else that I'd like to implement here in addition to our catwalk system which I discussed and we have to sort of put something and whatever this is just aesthetics to make it look a little nicer and close off the holes to the swivel the rotary table and whatever um, but what I'd like to do is have the catwalk doesn't matter for us right now because I don't need a, I don't need to get down there to look at anything as at, at, at this time. But what I do want to do, and also these things, maybe they're better if they're up there. We'll find out shortly. Presumably they would be more stable near the top. Because near the top they're just gonna act like um, they're just gonna hang from that versus if we go any higher it may if we go any lower like down there it may want to actually um, rotate a little so I think the highest point is the best for us so what I wanted to do is to encourage it to slide down I want to put a slider or track sliding track this thing because with the sliding track this system will actually go down nice and smooth where I put it that's something else to consider but in theory um, 
this portion here is the one that is attached to whatever slides and then this is what it's attached to the building itself so in that case what i'm going to do is have this one like if we say we put it here on either side i'm getting reattached to this maybe a bit of a nightmare so i'm that's something that we're gonna have to look in look into later but regardless this will go here and i'm just getting a feeling for where it goes so up to there and now let's drop it down so like that obviously this will not need to get any higher than that so this portion doesn't have to even be the track it can just be a simple block and probably to be honest i'd want to make this a different color just so it's clear it's not part of the wellhead and if we're very smart this can all go all the way down as far down as it can go which is right here So then that's actually going to follow our track all the way down. Now I'm worried that this may glitch out the system. What I mean by that is it may uh, mess up some of the thing. What I mean is that it may, um, I had an issue where my, where my Oma base was too big for the spot and it would actually like not spawn. So I don't want to go all the way to the very, very extents is what I meant to say before I had a brain freeze. Okay, we'll take this, we're just going to copy it to the other side, rotate it, and move it out to this one. So now, what we have is a system of tracks that are actually going to feed, the, the whole thing will slide down the tracks, and will um, get us, like, we'll be pretty far down by the time we've already attached maybe two rods and that's kind of my intention with this also what I just found out is this would be much better suited as high up as possible because this will not disconnect from the track until later so that was also an oversight that I just had so what I'm going to do is move this up to there there's no reason to have it near the bottom I think it's in our best interest to have it attached as long as possible, which would be from here. And then we just extend our track up as well on both sides, right to that point. Okay, so that's going to now go down there. Like I said, we're going to put a camera in, in a few places. Whether it's like extended off this structure or whatever, that's something I have to decide. Probably a good place for it would be like that. So maybe even sticking off the side of this thing at a downward angle like this and then we just put the camera on the end like that so this is what it's going to see this blocks this uh brace blocks it a little bit so that may be better to have the camera extend in this direction and look down like that off this part here anyway that doesn't matter that's I'll determine that later what we need to do is now have the various winches and things connected to our little uh, workbench that I've added here so 
so this will need its own microcontroller and to be honest after a little bit of more thinking i think it's better to have one that's has uh, the buttons as well and the indicator like this so it'll actually tell us when it's attached to the seafloor kind of like this and if we attach the composite to that and that so channel uh, clamped wall track clamp active so this is actually a little different than what we're trying to do so I may have a better system that has more things or I'll just adjust it here so that wall track is what tells us whether we want to go up or down but we're not using a wall track we're using a winch which just has a simple up and down function so instead of the wall track I'm going to make this uh, on off output and likewise with this one on off output we'll call this up or winch up and the other one will be the winch down and we'll just extend this we don't need this anymore we don't need this anymore or this or any of this we just have that so one will presumably be on the top so i'd call that what would be our up and two would be our down now i want to make sure that they're um push buttons which they are so winch up and then three will be winch down winch the whole wellhead and winch the whole wellhead and then for the indicators that will be something else but regardless let's just attach this so winch down and we go to all our winches okay winch down winch down winch down and winch down and then winch up will be the other button so those guys now what will have to be done for the system that's down here which tells us the drill depth and is anchored anchored whatever so i have to make a composite controller for that because obviously this could be simply attached to this and this but the actual depth reading and whatever that's something else that we'll have to make a composite i might just do the radio uh receiver like what we had for the other um that's already pre-made in the game but anyway, this one here, on off input is is anchored. Uh, no, I may have to do something else. Because we want to make sure that we can press a button here, number two, and say, well, head anchor to C floor. And I'm going to make it a flip switch because that's a bit more intense. So we're going to flip that switch and we're going to anchor this down. Now, if we go look here, that is not the clamp active. But what it is, and this one here will be. So anchor this and then this one is going to say wellhead anchored. Active. What color is it? I guess I don't really have a lot of color here except for that green one. So I will add a green to that as well because that's obviously important. So clamped. That is what we used for um, when it is clamped actually. So what I can do, in theory that'd be attached to this, but since that's not attached to our structure, like it's kind of a separate free hanging thing, we have to use 
one of these. So I guess I could use this on off output. And then this one is what will attach to is anchored. That will hopefully work. Whereas this is anchor. And this is our on off input that turns on that anchor. I don't know if any of that made any sense or if it'll even work, but let's take a look. So I will make this nicer in the future, but for now, let's just have some very sketchy ladders where you can take a look at what you've done here and hopefully not regret everything in your life as you're standing on this little piece of catwalk and potentially fall off and you know all the way down but what I want to see is whether or not this is working and lastly we need to connect everything to the electrical grid so for the breakers that I currently have I don't have anything for this so I may just need to add a breaker that will be plugged into the relay at A. And now this relay is plugged into this battery, so we're fine. And then this will be connected to all of our electric stuff here. So this, this, all our winches, all of our nodes, and our um, control panel in here. We're not using our screens yet, but let's just go with that. And then this here, um, oh, I connected them to the wrong ones, I see. This won't be connected because these nodes are attached to the actual wellhead. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna congregate them all to this one. So that's gonna be our main, main one. And what I could even do is send the signal through here, which will feed it to my display, which will have to have a button to turn it on. If we, what, how does it turn on? A and B. So if something and something, if our button's pressed and we're in the room. Okay. So I'll add one of those as well. Here. So if we're in the room, which the sensor is here, and we pressed a button, then turn on, you know, these displays. What did we have? We just had a simple key function. So I'm gonna draw it and drag that key over here as well, and we'll call this the wellhead station. Wellhead station. It needs to be on the electrical grid as well. Now I attached it to a funky one. Oh, rod joining clamp, I see. This is supposed to be the... The wellhead positioning system. That sounds more official. Yeah. Wellhead positioning system and this will turn on our display if we are in the room as well. All right, let's uh, try to see what I've done here. Takes a second to spawn, it's already pretty damn big. Okay, turn the key. Nice, so we see that. And if we start to move it down. So I've hit something. I've hit my little uh, dock, but it did move and it moved fairly straight. So actually that's very good news. We can move it back up. Oh, actually let's attach it to seafloor. And let's see if that is actually active. Try not to fall down. 
Well, actually, let's fall down. No, so I do have to make a microcontroller. Okay. First, I'm going to remove my little dock because clearly that stopped this from going down properly. I may make the dock actually go around this so you can get down to this level and whatever. But for now, we'll just clear it out of the way. And what I was saying is that the uh, what I've done here for this is a big uh, mistake. <laughs> so we'll redo that and redo all these guys here. I'm probably going to make a nice uh, radio activated composite. So let's uh, do that. Now this could be break, like braked. We don't need to release it. It's going to slide down. We could have a break, but we'll see. That may be something I add later. I think it won't really affect what we're trying to do right now. Um, but what we do need is a little radio antenna. Now this little one can go 100 meters. So since our wellhead can actually drop more than that, I'm probably going to put the bigger uh, radio or alternatively our building itself which I deleted the radio anyways so that won't even work properly no nope, I guess that's right here wellhead receive small so it's a small one so it can go 100 so in theory this one can go 100 and this one can go 100 so they could meet in the middle at our maximum depth. So that's actually fine. We'll make it our nice uh, yellow orange color. We will not attach it in the center, but rather have like a little data, data port here and some type of microcontroller feeding this. So if I go to the wellhead microcontroller that I've found that I've created here, this is the receiving unit, but let's edit that to be a sending unit. Well, hit communicator. So the picture itself is the receiver. I'm going to change that to be the sender. So wellhead sending or wellhead uh, send radio communicator. In that case, and I'll use the same frequency, why not? Um, instead of receiving, we are now send. So we need to have an output rather than input. And these need to be inputs rather than outputs. So we've just flipped what the system does. And I will make it the uh, composite send with the number as such, and this can go here. So we start with channel one and we have two channels, which is exactly what we have. So our drill depth was channel one. So I'm gonna keep that there and our well depth was channel two. So we'll just keep that right there like that. Now, in addition to this, I have to have my clamping system. So for that, I'm gonna extend it by two and add two nodes. We may have to add three nodes for the radio antenna send because it's the indicator as well as the button. But let's just do this first. So our input is going to be activate clamp, which and then this one is clamp indicator active. And then for the composite, we need a composite right. which I believe we can just put in a sequence like that and do that. So that will now activate our clamp. So channel one on the, um, kind of don't like that. I may make this start at channel three just for the ease of things. Even though I know the on and off and numbers are different like series, but let's just start it when channel three. 
and then we can spawn this thing in. Make this one be our main data send. I guess actually this would be the same thing. So we don't even, but look, since I already have the uh, radio antenna and everything's connected, let's just stick with it. Though I may need to edit, that may force me to edit that controller anyways. So I have to be careful because now I'm sending more information than that can take. So I'll have to probably edit it regardless. So then in that case, it's probably better just to attach it directly to this one. But I'll find that in a second. So what I have here is the well depth. So that's the well depth, drill depth, drill depth. Frequency is going to the radio in this case. Here we have activate clamp. Returns true when the wellhead is anchored to the terrain. Clamp indicator. Hmm. So they're actually on a different grid. So this will now tell us whether or not we're... Oh, I see. Yeah. So there, we just have to flip them around. So our activate or clamp, whatever, and our activate. They're just flipped around. And I will need to have actually that other composite controller or composite node, which will be an input node. And it'll be a radio receive in this case, because we're actually getting that instruction from our controller up there. And it's gonna be this one just like that and to make things easier I could make this number four so there we have it and I will not oh the frequency is not needed because we're not going to be sending it through the radio anymore we'll be sending it just um, through the node itself so I will have to change up that little uh, receive unit I have for the information. But in this case, instead of doing this, we could just put it directly to this and this. And the radio antenna is not needed. We're sending it to these ones, so that means this winch is what's going to be receiving this information here. So now I need to create a receiving end for this stuff. Because now it's all sending it via that connector through this one winch. And that winch is located like under here. But let's put this in here and make it the reverse one. So rate wellhead. And in fact, the name is not going to be radio, receive node or anchor communicator is what I'm going to call this. So in that case, it's an R. If I know how to write like that. Now that picture, whatever, I mean, change it a little bit save that in here so this is the receiving unit whereas down there is our sending unit and I'm gonna change the name of this one as well to be anchor well send anchor communicator we don't need the radio send we're just gonna call this the anchor and both of them are just anchor and there Oh, I didn't even save it. Always save the stuff in case things start to crash or go wonky. And also just to check your progress. Okay, now in this one here. So this is our receive unit, which will have 
the opposite so we don't need this anymore and what I was saying is now this will be our input this will be our output these are both going to be output and outputs so before I confuse myself and everyone watching there's a couple of things we have to do so keep in mind our composite oh, so that's written wrong that's not radio send we're just going to call this the anchor and anchor so our anchor which, which was our channel 4 that was activating our clamp is now going to be writing channel 4 So that's this one here is now the right. Whereas these ones are going to be one, um, or sorry, this one is three. And then the composite right read number was our one and two. So one and two. Attach that before we forget. And attach that here. Now we can move it around, position it properly. And here, our anchor. So, now we've inversed it. And this one is the one sending, and this is the one receiving all this stuff. So that should be A-OK. -okay. Also, don't forget to save what I just did. So this is our receiver, update that, cool. And that's attached to that far winch right here and right here. Now these are still the same as they were. This is whether it is clamped and this is our activate clamp. So that system now should be functioning let's take a look once it spawns we'll run over there that was a good jump okay so turn the station on cool we can drop it down we're approaching the water we'll add lights to it obviously okay now anchor to sea floor now that's not active, but what should be active is at least, oh yeah, let's bring it back up actually. What should be active is on the actual thing itself. It should tell me that it is active on the wellhead. See, anchor true, but obviously false, it is not anchored. We could bring it, or we take, could take it all the way down to the seafloor, which I don't quite know how deep it is here. It doesn't seem too bad. Okay, let's take it all the way down and see if it'll anchor itself. So we'll turn that off and we'll throw it down all the way. And I wish these screens had the display that said, you know, what the distance is, what our reading is, when it's at the seafloor, etc., etc. But for now, we're just gonna do this. Let's check on it see if it's at the bottom yet almost oh, okay I may see the shadow I wish I had lights like I was saying but we'll do that after let's go still moving down now in theory we'd have all our clamps attached to it at this point oh well, that's actually helpful. I could see the light there. Okay, moment of truth. Beautiful. It is anchored to the ground. So, very basic system for now, but at least this worked. Now, what I'll have to do the checking on is to have the, whether the rods can be placed in it and all that good stuff, add the different sensors, but we'll do that all in the next video. So, thank you for watching. This was part two of the Ulta oil platform. We did some planning, we did some uh, testing. I wanna have an ROV, I wanna have a mini sub, like 
the the oma guys could send a mini sub that can take a look at the wellhead it could go repair it maybe stuff like that so there's a lot of things that i have planned but this was an excellent test for now so thanks for watching stay tuned for more and happy stormworksing